Today we're gonna look at basic guitar maintenance. One crucial part of basic guitar maintenance is changing your strings. Not waiting till they break, but looking at your strings and saying, you know what, these are cruddy, they sound a little dull, and I haven't changed them in a while, so I should probably change my strings. Now I change my strings about once every two weeks, but on average, I would say at least once a month, you should check in and say, Gosh, are my strings looking garbagey? Because if they're looking garbagey, chances are it's time to take the garbage out and put a new set of strings on. So here's what I want you to do. Fill a glass of water, whiskey, or coffee, and grab your favorite record. This could take a little bit, so grab your favorite record, probably a soothing record, put it on, and then change away. And just stay relaxed and calm, because it can be a little frustrating, but I'm gonna work out the kinks with you and it's gonna be all good. So get your guitar, get a pack of strings, a string cutter, a string winder, and a flat surface. And we're about to go on a string changing epic journey. Step one, we have to loosen the strings. Okay, in order to get them off, they gotta be loose. Now, this is a pretty easy and honestly what I think is the most fun because I like to hit the string and then loosen it. And you get this really, it's like a cartoon sound effect. So I imagine myself making six cartoon sound effects. It's like, bam. So what we're gonna do is start on the high E string and then loosen each string. And then onto the B string. And so on and so forth. So I know I said that the last step was really fun, but I gotta be honest, this next one, it's really fun. And if you're getting frustrated, this is a great moment to take out your frustrations because what I'm gonna do is have you cut the strings above the sound hole. Now remember, they're loose. They don't sound very good and that's what we want. So we're gonna take our wire cutters and snip them, all six of them, right above the sound hole, like so. I like to cut each string one at a time because it just feels good, and it's not every day that you get to just cut through a guitar string, except for on restring day, which is today. So now that I've cut the strings down the middle, I gotta take out the bridge pins to get the rest of the string out. On your string winder, there's a fancy dancy little notch in the bottom. We're gonna use that. You put that around the base of the head of the bridge pin, and then pull up. And just like that, you can take the string end out. Now, it's really important, or at least I feel it's really important, to replace the bridge pin because very often I lose them. And if I put them back, then I don't lose them. So you go on down the line. And you kind of feel like an IndyCar pit crew because it's just a fun thing you can do fast. But be safe, of course. So I've taken the ball end portion of the string out and now all I have to do is unravel the end of the string from the tuner posts. It's a pretty easy step. Just like that, you've got a bunch of strings in your hand. Watch your eyes, because those are sharp little buggers. What I like to do with the free strings, rather with the ones I just cut off, is I just like to coil them around at least once so that I don't get them in my eye or in my foot later on, or ultimately they'll end up in the vacuum, and that's a really scary sound. So I just coil them up together and into the garbage they go. So now that all the strings are off, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean the areas that are usually difficult to reach. Under the strings on the body, and then on the headstock. Just a nice little dust, and it's that easy. Now, I'm ready for brand new strings. So, first step, locate the string package and rip that sucker open. For this particular guitar, I'm doing a little experiment today. I'm trying the Martin Retro Light Strings because I think tonally, they'll be a really good match for this guitar. And that's one great thing about changing strings, it's the cheapest experiment you can do to make your guitar sound different. So, just like you're learning how to change your strings today and experimenting with that, I'm gonna experiment with a new set of strings. So now starts the glorious transformation into your new guitar strings. Think of it like a caterpillar going into a cocoon and coming out, emerging, bursting through as a butterfly. This is the first step in that transformation, and that is putting the new strings in. Now, seems easy enough, but I wanna go over just a few little details. Number one, depending on what strings you get, there's some sort of naming convention that says, hey, this is the E string, hey, this is the A string, so on and so forth. So make sure to read the package. Now, if it doesn't have that for some reason, just look at the numbers. The higher the number, the thicker the string, that means it's a lower string. So the low E will be a higher number than, say, the high E. Here we go. 
We're starting the tonal transformation right now. Open the envelope, but do so in a way that's not near your face because you could get stabbed. And the last thing I want you to do during a tonal transformation is get stabbed. Nobody needs to get stabbed. So I usually hold the ball end of the string and then away from me, kind of uncoil. It can be a little scary. It's like an explosion, like a little explosion. So I'm gonna start with the low E string. I'm gonna take the bridge pin out. And what I'm gonna do is with my thumb, hold the ball end against the bridge pin and then put a little bend in the string so it looks like that. So this will help the ball end sit a little bit better against the bridge plate inside the guitar. So now all we have to do is place the ball end inside the hole and then push it down with the bridge pin. Now it can be a little bit sticky, but don't get nervous, but also don't force it. If for some reason it's not going in smoothly, take it back out and then try again. It might be just that things need to line up a little bit differently. So I'm gonna repeat that same exact process on all of the strings. So that's 50% of the tonal transformation that we're going through right now. The other 50% happens by winding the strings around the tuner posts on the headstock. Now there's a lot of debate of how to do it, which way is the best. And I feel that as long as a string is securely anchored on the tuner posts, any way is good. But I'm gonna show you the two most popular ways because I think between the two you'll find one that you really like. So the first step on the headstock end of the guitar is to use a pencil to lubricate the nut slots, okay? I like these carpenter pencils because the graphite's really soft. And all you really do is color over the nut slot. This provides enough lubrication so that the strings pass through there nice and smooth and you don't have any tuning issues. I know that looks really messy, but I'll wipe it off in a bit. The next step is the strings. Now, I'm gonna take the low E string and I'm gonna show you one of the two ways. And I'm actually gonna show you that way on the E, the A, and the D string, and then I'll do the other way on the high E, the B, and the G string. So first step, pass the string through the tuner post. And I like to pull it tight. Once I've pulled it tight, I use my other hand to give it some slack. Now I immediately start winding. So as I start winding, I'm gonna pull the string tight and make sure that the first revolution goes over the free end of the string. I have to make a couple corrections here, but it'll ensure that the string locks into place. Now the other thing you wanna be sure of is that the string is being wound towards the center of the headstock, not on the outside, towards the center. Now each successive wind after that one over the top is gonna to go down towards the headstock, almost as if it was being layered. Just gonna bend that free end out of the way and keep winding. And I like to play it just so I can hear how tight it's getting. And don't forget to clip the ends of the string off. Go ahead and clip it as close to the tuner post as you can so it doesn't snag on anything. So remember, on the lower strings, the E, the A, and the D, we use the over-under method. That was one good method. Now we're gonna use the crimp, or I like to call it the Martin method, on the high E, the B, and the G string. Now one thing that is, has to be there regardless of the method is that you string the strings towards the inside of the headstock. You don't want them going to the outside of the tuner post. That could damage the nut, and it's not so good for the guitar in general. So onto the high E string, we're gonna be doing the Martin or the crimp method. We're gonna go ahead and feed the string through, just like you did on the other method. Pull it tight. With your free hand, in this case my right hand, I'm gonna pull up a little slack, take the free end of the string, go towards the center of the headstock, and underneath the string, part of the part of the string that's anchored to the body. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that tight, and then go over the string, crimp it over. So essentially you're going underneath the string and coming back around. This will lock it in place. And now I'll just go ahead and wind it. Again, each successive wind is gonna go down towards the face of the headstock of the guitar. Almost like you're layering it.
I'm gonna go ahead and clip off that free end really close to the tuner post so it doesn't snag on anything. Now I'm gonna use that method for the B and the G string as well. The tonal transformation is almost complete. Your tonal caterpillar, you're sitting in the tone cocoon, you're starting to chew your way out, and all you wanna do is fly. But to fly, well, you're really only missing a couple of steps. You gotta tune your guitar, which I've already done, but once you tune it up to standard pitch, I want you to stretch out the strings a little bit, okay? I, I don't want you to like wrench on them, but go towards the 12th fret, and you can do this with a guitar laying in front of you still, and all you have to do is just bend on the string a little bit. You don't even have to play it. Just give it a little bend, just so that it kind of helps the strings settle in. Now this isn't gonna do 100% of the work, but it'll help kind of get that initial settling out of the way. Once you stretch it, go back through and tune it again, play it a little bit, tune it again, and eventually the strings will kind of reach this nice state of equilibrium where they're not fluctuating so drastically. So there you have it. The tonal transformation is now complete. Your guitar is gonna sound like a million bucks and remember, we're doing this, I would say, roughly once a month. It keeps our guitars sounding really, really good, and it's fun, because we put a record on, remember? And now you're a tonal butterfly, and you can flit and fly around the field and pollinate as many flowers as you want with your newfound tone. If you're about to do a little acoustic guitar maintenance, make sure you have the right tools before you get started. I've compiled a list of all the tools that I own and use, some of which are surprising little tricks that I've learned from my luthier friends. To get the list of my top 20 tools for DIY acoustic guitar maintenance, go ahead and click the link here in the video or in the description, enter your email, and I'll send it to you right away.